Welcome to the Bach Aria Festival and Institute at Stony Brook, Long Island. A program of concerts, rehearsals, and study of Bach's music presented by the Bach Aria Group, working with 40 outstanding young professional vocalists and instrumentalists assembled here from all parts of the country. I'm Martin Bookstrand. The Bach Aria Group, an ensemble of solo singers and instrumentalists, was founded in 1946 by William H. Scheide to study and perform arias from over 200 cantatas that Bach wrote for weekly church services in Leipzig and for other occasions. These works reveal in their expressive power and astonishing variety the human concerns that lie at the heart of Bach's music. Every summer, the Bach Aria Group selects 40 fellows from among hundreds of applicants to be in residence at the Fine Arts Center of the State University of New York at Stony Brook. In this environment, an atmosphere of dedication and friendly collaboration is quickly established. Two or three times a week, the Bach Aria Group and the Fellows of the Institute perform together in concerts of Bach's music. <laughs> music director Samuel Barron has said, more than the eternal marvel of Bach's musical craft, it is his universal human expressivity that ensures his continuing hold on music lovers of all generations. The full range and power of Bach's music is revealed when talented and dedicated musicians, vocalists, and instrumentalists work together in an environment such as that provided by the Bach Aria Festival and Institute. I love it. <laughs> Playing Bach for two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> We're in heaven, and I'm not religious. <laughs> Bach is just amazing. It's just the greatest music. So. Everything that we would ever feel as human beings is expressed in his music. And I think that he's unique that way. Everybody has the feeling, this is my music. Bach wrote for me, you know, and they're all right. I mean, that is true. <laughs> he wrote for you, but he wrote for other people. <laughs> In addition to public concerts, the Bach Aria Group soloists and the 40 artist fellows of the Institute participate in a variety of rehearsals, master classes, and coaching sessions. <laughs> help this part. Violinist James Boswell. You see, so that the impression is that of truly arpeggiated broken chords. <laughs> Yeah, 
I think between you, you have to make an expressive point. Uh, Oboist Ronald Rosenberg. Every aria is, is, is like a speech, except it's 8,000 times more effective than it ever could be in speech. Mm. And more touching. And I think you have to make it touching. Mm. I think that the difference is this. Tenor Seth McCoy. We have been doing it longer, you see. And we do it with a certain amount of conviction because we have convinced ourselves that this is the way it should be done. <laughs> and as a result, I guess this is impressive to someone that hasn't uh, done this. And so they says, ah, oh, I've learned something. But when he gets as much as experience, he'll do the same thing and maybe better. Tenor Seth McCoy and violinist James Boswell in a complete performance of the Alleluia Aria from Cantata Number no. 29. Ah, 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 ah,
The arias from Bach's cantatas almost always begin with an instrumental introduction that sets the mood and character of the piece. Here, Samuel Barron works with flutist Craig Goodman and soprano Bernadette Fiorella in an aria from cantata number 100. What God does, that is well done. Again, this should be one uh, a mood of confidence and serenity. Be, because it's too active, it's too anxious. <laughs> it's too, yeah. Because you believe that what God does is well done, then various things follow, and then you, you, that's expressed later on. Uh, uh, he is a doctor, and he won't give me poison for for uh, healing and so forth. And uh, you you have great trust, Getroy, that comes later. All right. And it's, it's fascinating that when the voice comes in and says the words in the same rhythm of the instrumental music, it uh, throws a light on it backwards. I, I love the way you entered. You had the right color and the right mood. All right, four, five, six. <laughs> Here's something that the, the singer must really be on the lookout for. In these arias, Bach uses very few words, but the aria takes a few words and says them over and over and turns them upside down and looks at them from many points of view. And the purpose is to feel the, the uh, significance, religious significance, philosophical significance, the profundity of it. And so the singer is faced with the task of saying the same words over and over. But if you, if you look closely, you see that Bach has given you different opportunities. They're musical opportunities. They, they make your performance very effective and very intense. Here you say this. Just say these words in rhythm, OK? Er als mein Arzt und Wundermann. Er als mein Arzt und Wundermann. Okay, you've said the same thing twice, the same words, and even the same rhythms, right? Just about. Yeah. Exactly the same rhythm. It. Now say the say it with the pitches. Sing it with the pitches. I'll give you the pitches. Okay. Go ahead. Quite different. Uh, that, that which went up goes down, right? First you said, er als mein oh. Arzt und Wundermann. Then you started from a high point, er als mein Arzt und Wundermann. This then uh, develops the thought, it heightens the feeling of wanting to complete, and then it colors every word differently. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's all go back to one spot now. Measure 23, everybody. Okay. 
really say it. Beautiful. Good. Watch this cadence. One, two. I was amazed at how well he knew yeah, he not really only about the flute parts. part, but so much about what was going on in the voice and so much yes. about what was going on in the continuo. He knew so much that, you know, it amazed me that he had that kind of in-depth knowledge about... Everything. I would take the time to yeah, find yeah, out that in-depth knowledge. Which most, you know, regular performers don't have the time or don't take the time. I think this is, that's the advantage of this group. It's a, it's a really broad-based group. Often you'll have a flute player who is a flute player. And they don't really they don't really worry about what the singer is saying because that's you know let the singer do that. But these people realize the integral nature of, of the whole work and how how the the coloring and meaning of a word affects the phrasing of their particular instrument. They they're really challenging, you know, and they really give you something to bite your teeth into. <laughs> Bach Aria Group bass Thomas Paul coaches Tim Haufeck. It's time to make a comment, and it goes for all of us. And I take, I'll take my own advice too. I promise. <laughs> the face is so important. You know, we have sounds, we have voice, we have a lot of things going for us. The music itself, thank God, but. Our faces are so vitally important. It's, it's almost like people will think and hear only what they see. And I know that we're all busy trying to do a good job, and sometimes that shows on our faces as the only, only value, and actually we are thinking better thoughts than that. But right now, I have to challenge you to let us see in your face, get into this attitude through your eyes, to your mind's eye, to your imagination, that your face shows this, this, this more ecstatic quality. You think, have you ever practiced that sort of thing? I'm mm -hmm. trying to evoke that from yourself. So be Jesus der ins Fleisch gekommen und mein Opfer angenommen. I'm not trying for an arty atmosphere with eyes closed and too much of that sort of thing. But on the other hand, if you just stand there looking like the the cast in stone stereotype oratorio singer, you'll never communicate what it is that's inside of you to communicate. And we won't have anything evoked from us either that's appropriate. So you'd practice, Jesus, der in Fleisch gekommen und mein Opfer angenommen, bleibet, you're saying, bleibet bei mir alle Zeit, stay by me always, you see. That's very personalized. That's the, that's the Reformation attitude, that's the, the Lutheran poet, as opposed to the the uh, impersonality of what came before. Now you are free to go directly to God, directly to Jesus, and take him right to you. And how many texts do we sing where you even hold Jesus tight to your breast? And you're right in his lap, and you who's rocking whom like a baby? I'm not sure sometimes. <clears throat> but you're all wrapped up together. So please uh, venture forth a little bit more with what you think this is like inside and what it can look like to us, too. All right? 46, again, everybody. Jesus, der ins Fleisch gekommen und mein Opfer angenommen bleibet bei mir alle Zeit. Thomas Paul, bass, Timothy Eddy, cello, and Yehudi Weiner, continuo, perform an aria from Cantata number 94. 
the world is like smoke and shadow and may soon vanish. Thomas Paul and Bach Aria Group soprano Susan Deveni Weiner. Years, so that you are not, you're not unaware and you're certainly not ashamed to feel and to represent these feelings. But as you grow, you start to latch on to your own ideas and you start to get more conviction about them and you put them forth with more assertiveness. But the young singer just stands there and it's all sort of filmily realized in his head somewhere what he wants it to be like. But he just hasn't done it enough. He hasn't acquired the craft to put it forth. And all I can say is that it just takes a long, long time. I think it's terribly important not to impose a vision on a young singer, but but to a, to show a young singer what what kind of involvement and commitment and richness there is, and what kind of of richness of expressivity is possible. I have a feeling one has to know what every note means or have a feeling about every note. But having the courage and having the depth to, to really dig into what the words and what the music is about is, is what we're here to help them with. Susan Deveni Weiner works here with Rosa Lamoureux. Very what? Schon. Schon, my dear. Were I already by you? Right, you're going very shown by you. you. And okay. I think it's very shown oh, by you. Okay. Yeah. The Ach was much yes. better because then okay. you can give the quality of the Jesus on the zoom. But before, I think it's a real outpouring. Okay. <laughs> Just very shown, then go off into the other statement. Very shown, my dear. Yes. Ach, spreche mir der Wind schon über. Okay. Spreche mir die wa was? Wind. Wind. Okay. Sing into the vowel. The vowels are what are going to give us the expressiveness in the, okay. in the voice. Ach, spreche mir der Wind schon über. Okay, now still I'm not convinced. Ach, sprich mit der Wind schon über Gruft und Kra. Ach, sprich mit der Wind schon über Gruft und Kra. 
You're doing a beautiful double L and stuff, but okay. we need no. You're very game, but let's let's get it. Really? Yes. Yes. Now. Janice Taylor, Bach Aria Group Contralto, coaching Barbara Hall. That's that's a step in the right direction. Excuse me. I just feel that there needs to be a little bit more uh, contrast. You know, Bach wanted to have all of these reflections in his music. That's why he wrote the words so many times, mm -hmm. because uh, he was a very innish man, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was a very interior man, and he wanted to reflect these words to their fullest extent and possibility. So I'd like to see you explore other thoughts about these words, other weighting of, of certain words in a phrase. You know, if you say, the Törte Welt, the Törte Welt, May we take the same phrase where we, we were last time, <laughs> measure before the entrance, David? <laughs> going to take just a little while. You have to bring something within yourself mm -hmm. out when you're singing and, and um, uh, be convinced within yourself first, mm -hmm. of course. I'd like to see you all develop your own personalities as performers. Recognize that you are unique. Nobody wants to see a copy. They want to see the original thing. So Go okay. within yourself and search out your feelings and find your own unique way because there's if you find your way there's nobody that can mm -hmm. you know nobody that can beat you. Mm -hmm. Janice Taylor Contralto Timothy Eddy, Cello, and Yehudi Weiner, Continuo. Perform Von Kump der Tag from Cantata Number 70. When will the day come when we must flee before the fire overtakes us? Know that the world's end is at hand.
Okay, let, why don't we begin? Okay, the place will quiet down when we start for a You think can we start with uh, Samir? Good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, a rehearsal of the members of the Bach Aria group, and it's really a working session. We, our concert is tomorrow night, and this is our main opportunity to do arias for the smaller combinations. Tonight at the general rehearsal, we'll be working with the orchestra and the chorus. Joined by Timothy Eddy, Yehudi Weiner, and double bassist Eric Cohen, Susan Deveni Weiner and Janice Taylor rehearse the childlike aria from Cantata number 78. We hasten with eager though faltering footsteps to thee, O Master. <laughs> I'm doing what you did to yeah. you, dear, yeah. to yeah. dear, to 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 dear,
Well, there's no doubt that Bach was a religious person and that he had great security in his religion. Uh, do you think that he was trying to sort of impart faith through the music? That was, that was kind of his function as a preacher? I, the word that always comes to my mind is the word edify. Mm. Uh, I think that to, to so many of the people that he wrote these cantatas for, their faith was a given. Yeah, it was a part of true. their life already. But the art that he was so glorious at being able to conceive and set down the paper and realize was an art which he felt must edify his people, mm. must heighten their appreciation of their faith and bring faith, which after all can become a very abstract thing, mm. into the presence of their lives day by day and week by week. But I felt that, I have often felt that Bach was um, not just uh, repeating or reinforcing, I, I felt in many cases that he's actually grappling with the question. And he says, our religion tells us this, but can this really be true? Can we really uh, uh, accept death, for example, as a great thing? Do we, always, do we all long for death? I mean, that's not natural. Human beings don't long for death. They fear death. Yeah. So in his music, he would have a big, uh, you know, dramatic, theatrical, almost operatic uh, turbulence about that. And uh, that's, I, I would say, that's how he reached his listeners. They said, well, we all share the same faith, but when we hear the music of this Bach guy, he really turns us inside out. And so it would be easy for people to say, this is beautiful religious music of another time and place, and, uh, you know, we just accept it beautiful for what it is. But I still feel that it hits you where you live, in any case you realize that there's somebody grappling here with something real, immediate, vital, having to do with your life. And, should we sit down? And uh, it makes Bach very immediate, even in a concert hall setting. Violinist James Boswell and the ensemble in a movement from cantata number 146. We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. That's the Tenor Seth McCoy, uh, oboist Ronald Roseman, and violinist James Boswell. Too. I love to listen to Bach, but I find it so challenging. It is so hard to perform. I felt last night on stage, when I got up at the end to join everybody in the chorale, mm. I just looked around a little bit at some of the fellows in the orchestra, 
And there were people with tears in their eyes, not one or two, but several. And, and I think that there is a truly deep spiritual realization of the profundity of this music. Not just the profundity of it musically, but the profundity of it spiritually that is moving people as they play. What you're touching on is, is sort of the unsayable thing, uh, but I, I think it's that, that it's not only, only the music, but I think it's the spirituality behind the music. It seems that when you play these pieces, everybody is moved. And with Bach, each time I come back, each year I play the St. Matthew Passion, each time I see one of these arias, it just opens out. And there's more and more and more and more. It seems like it's infinite. There is no way in the world for me to accept the fact that there isn't a God. It's just that when I hear music like this and where I know I think that a man, and not only a God, but there has to be something after. There's no, no such thing as death finality. That a man that can create this, a human being can do this. I mean, this type of energy cannot cease. Bach is dealing with religious feelings as a Lutheran, but he's also dealing with, with them in a very basic way. Mm -hmm. And uh, any and all religion confronts these same problems. And the, the curious thing is that in our age, which is essentially uh, really not a very religious age, uh, people still turn to Bach's music. You say that religion is not as important, but still people are searching for something. Yes. And uh, you can you can find it, you know, it just, the music just speaks to you. James Buswell, Samuel Barron, Timothy Eddy, and Yehudi Weiner in a portion of the trio sonata from the musical offering. <laughs> teacher once said, he said, there are certain melodies you should play every day of your life. Just play them over because you, you pick them because they mean something to you. You don't know what they mean, but you should play them every day in your, of your life. When you're 30, they'll have one meaning. When you're 40, they'll have another. When you're 50, you might begin to understand what they're all about. In that sense, music and performing music is a profound way of putting you in touch with your own life. And therefore, when you have music that is a powerful emotional content and a big resonance, and you get a little piece of it and you stay with it, that piece grows bigger and bigger. The resonance grows greater and greater. And then your life, you as a person, have become a greater person. And so you're a better player. Es ist Vollbracht from Cantata number 159. 
life is fulfilled. Now I hasten to give thanks. O world, farewell. Performed by Thomas Paul, bass, and Ronald Roseman, oboe. Oh, no.
Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe. And if you would like to be informed when the next installment of the Bach Aria Festival and Institute is released, just click on the notification bell.